Yes, good morning, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Hey, firstly, once again, a big thank you for those who um, provided some really, really good input uh, and comments on that last video. Um, it was certainly very useful for me to to refine what I was thinking, correct some uh, some some misunderstanding uh, in regards to some of the modes and the like. So thank you very, very much. That was certainly, like I say, very useful. Um, what I have settled on uh, and what I'm going to do uh, is build a, um, a single sideband rig. That was um, certainly the way to go. Um, I think for the time being, I, I won't try and make it multi-band. I, I will look to do that in due course. So I think it sort of makes sense to, to look at 40 meters. Uh, that's sort of the best of uh, both worlds for, for sort of local and a bit of DX. Uh, and from what I can gather from listening around on the band, um, quite, uh, quite um, or popular or busy when it comes to the digital modes. Uh, work around five watts for now. Um, I got the impression from reading around on the internet and that that you know ten watts is certainly or above that is is frowned upon. So uh, that's sort of quite a nice number to work with for now. Um, I'm no longer going to call this an FT8 rig. Um, I think the comments re regarding making this applicable for any digital mode or most of the the common digital modes certainly make sense. Um, so that's what it's going to be. And what I'll look to use uh, is things like the WS. Uh, JT-X, uh, certainly JS8, um, uh, digital software for the computer, so um, that's what I look to use, like I say, on the computer. Um, clearly, using that CW filter was not going to work on the receive sense. Um, I need to have at least that sort of 2700 kilohertz uh, bandwidth, and I see with that particular software there, the, uh, the WS-JT software, that it's talking about for some of the modes and some of the functions within that software that having that sort of 5 kilohertz plus is ideal. Um, and doing this, this phasing rig, which I'm about to do, will certainly work well. Um, I'll come back to how I'm going to do that in a sec at the end. Um, with regards to the computer, I, I loaded up the software this morning onto that old uh, netbook and it cratered. The poor old thing basically had a heart attack and just about died. So um, uh, I've done away with that and what I will revert to is using uh, my normal uh, portable rig, which is this little um, Surface Go. Um, I, I find it pretty snappy, and from what I can gather there, just sort of comparing the, the, the bigger rig, well, we'll say again, the bigger computer with the smaller one, um, from a functionality point of view, and from a uh, the way that the, uh, the software seems to be running, and the CPU use just seems to be very, very similar, so um, I think that'll work fine. Um, as a consequence of using the Surface though, um, I'm now restricted when it comes to the number of ports. Uh, in fact, this device here only has one port, it's a USB-C on the side. So I'll have to use a, uh, a USB-C to USB adapter. Uh, because what I do want to do, um, if I can just drag out... Um, what I want to do is make this particular rig um, cat control. So let me just spin back over here again. Um, I like I say, I'm going to make this um, computer uh, computer controlled. Um, so I'm going to need some form of uh, means to convert from USB to serial. So we'll use one of these little adapter boards here, cheapest chips. I've got a couple there. Um, so that means with that one available port on the computer, um, I don't want to use a hub or any other any other means that I'll. Uh, I'll dedicate that USB port to the, the cat control side of the house uh, and then um, have the um, audio coming from what will be the Teensy uh, going directly to the, the microphone slash uh, audio in, audio out port on the computer. In other words, I won't use this for this particular build, uh, which is what I was initially thinking about, which is fine, no problems there. Um, in terms of cat control, uh, I'll make it um, look like an FT818. Um, I've got an FT818 coming, so it sort of makes sense to start to get my head around that particular protocol. Now, that introduces some interesting, some interesting things when it comes to the cat control, which I'm still need to get my head around. Um, the, the the software over here, I don't know if the built-in cat um, or the ability to have the software control the radio is bi-directional so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the idea of when you change f modes here and frequencies that that pushes it to the radio and the radio then um, c 
configures itself to that frequency. Um, I'm happy with the CAT also providing the PTT line, that's great. But what I'm not too sure about is uh, the VFO mode. So it was pointed out quite rightly that uh, you know, de-expeditions and the like can sometimes use uh, frequencies for their digital modes that are not the standard uh, frequencies, if you want to call them the standard frequencies, for example um, 7074 and the like. Um, so the ability to be able to tune around to, to find those would be, would be useful. Hence the comment about uh, retaining the, the rotary encoder. But I'm sort of thinking I'd, I'd, I need to have more of a play around with that particular software to work out if it's actually feasible to do that sort of searching uh, using the software, pushing the frequency to the, the radio, uh, and then have the radio report back bidirectionally what its frequency is and having that displayed uh, on the software or not. So that's a little bit sort of hazy and I need to do some more thinking about that. Because uh, ideally if I can do away with having the display and having the rotary encoder, um, or this display at least, and having the, 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 the radio's current frequency being displayed on the software, then you know, I save space, save a bit of current, um, uh, and the like. So, you know, that would be sort of ideal for me, and treat the box more like a, you know, an avionics piece of black, you know, a black box that just sits there, and have the whole of the, uh, the I.O. Uh, and HMI, the human machine interface, all been done through the, um, through the software. So, like I say, a little bit hazy on the whole idea of the bi-directionalness of that particular software. Um, what else I want to cover off on that? So, yeah, so definitely like the idea of being able to tune around. It's just what's the best way of doing that. Okay, so when it comes to the actual, um, the Tensi, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, I'm going to do an SDR-based rig. So I'm going to do a phasing, a phasing rig. So... Simplistically, um, we've got the RF coming in. It's split uh, between the, the, the in-phase line and the quadrature line here. Uh, it goes into mixes, so that, that split RF goes into two mixes where it's mixed with a local oscillator that is 90 degrees phase split. So we have an in-phase local oscillator and then the same frequency but shifted 90 degrees. So that audio that then comes out, because these will be a direct conversion mixes, so mixing that RF uh, directly down to audio frequency or our baseband. Um, so because this local oscillator is in phase, we'll have our reference zero phase coming out of audio, but because this one was quadrature, our audio coming out of this mixer is going to be shifted by 90 degrees. If we then apply that to yet another 90 degrees phase shift, we have 180 degrees with reference to this line here. And then either if we add or subtract, we can then recover our upper or lower sideband. So this will be the configuration I'll use uh, for both the receive side of the house and also the transmit. Now, so that's this box down here, this plus 90 degrees, I'm going to do that uh, within the Teensy. Um, I've got in the junk box a, uh, a Teensy 3.5. Uh, which is this one here, uh, it's an ARM Cortex chip, so it's really, uh, nice and powerful. Uh, a really nice, as far as I'm concerned, a really nice audio library that comes with the chip that was developed by, um, by the, uh, the, the manufacturer of this particular board here. Really strong, powerful DSP library. So the, 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 the Tensi here combined with its uh, audio shield, which allows for, for whoops, Daisy. Uh, line in, line in, and line out, as well as uh, a microphone and a, a speaker output, um, means that I can do all that that digital signal processing to do that plus 90 degrees uh, in software. And what it allows me to do, because I've been wanting to do this again, because I uh, I built an SDR rig around this um, some time ago. I wanted to revisit um, the Iowa Hills software that develops the coefficients for the fur filters that run. Uh, on the chip here, I wanted to revisit those, so uh, this is a great opportunity to 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 combine both of those into the one into the one radio. Um, I note too that uh, from a bandwidth point of view, I think I mentioned before that some of the modes and uh, functions within that software there is sort of calling out for a much wider bandwidth than traditionally out of the crystal filter, um, and then that's just so so simple to do in software. So. That's what I'm sort of looking forward to, to doing that. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, 
coming back to those two mixers there, um, I've got a, a couple of options. I can either just run with a standard um, passive or not uh, a passive filter here, for example, a uh, an SBL1 or the ADE-1. Uh, there's no um, gain in the conversion there in the mixing processes. It's, it's purely passive with a little bit of loss. Uh, if I do that, then I uh, I may have to apply a little bit of. Now this is incorrectly drawn. These amps they should be up here on the uh, on the received line, but um, that's fine. They should actually be completeness sitting up there and not there. A little bit of amplification on that received line before going into the Tensi. Um, or the other option is I leverage what I did on this particular rig, which is a uh, which is an 80 meter single sideband rig that uses a couple of NE612s as the two mixers. Uh, in that particular case, um, you'll, be, you'll recall that the NE612 has uh, two inputs and two outputs, and I had, uh, as, as color-coded there, so um, yellow for transmit, orange for receive, I had dedicated the input inputs and the outputs to be either on the receive or the transmit side. Bit hard to explain in words, but uh, up on the blog is the schematic which uh, describes what I did there. Um, a little bit unconventional, because I think the, the more conventional way to use uh, the NE612 is to use um, two ports together in, in, a, in a balance type format, but in this particular case, by having the, uh, the inputs, the two inputs and the two outputs um, being dedicated for separate functions worked well. So if that's the case, oh sorry, and the beauty then of actually using the NE612 in this configuration is you get some um, some gain out of the uh, the conversion process. So uh, I can sort of kill two birds and make things a little bit smaller in one go. And get the mixing and get the amplification at the same time. So that particular configuration would be more like this. So uh, I know there's a whole lot of crossovers here and I apologise for that but never mind. Uh, we've got our Tensi over here, uh, we've got line in and line out, so line in, so it's our receive audio coming in, our I and our Q, and conversely on transmit, the same thing. We, uh, we have the computer sitting over here, providing audio out, going into the microphone input of the Tensi, uh, once again applying that uh, 90 degrees phase shift, and then pumping it back out into the mixes. You can see here we can dedicate, if we just look at this 612 up here, in a would be the receive in, whereas in B would be the transmit audio coming out of the Tensi. And then output A in this particular case would be the audio that's going into the Tensi, whereas output B, because it's coming through the other one, would actually be our RF that would then be combined with the quadrature phase to create our desired um, upper sideband for, for transmission. So I'd, I'd utilize two splitters here one for the receive side, and then one, uh, this bit here would actually be a combiner to combine the RF to produce um, our desired sideband for, um, for for punching out on the uh, the transmitter. Of course, over here, they'd be switching between the transmit and the receive side. Uh, by having the uh, the low pass filter, or say again, the band pass filter, just prior to this relay here, uh, I get to shear that between the uh, the receive and the transmit, and I don't have to duplicate that. Um, so that, anyway, that's I'm still toying with the idea of maybe I should just give this a go again uh, because, I, like I say, I do get that little bit of amplification um, at the same time. So that's what I'm toying with. Um, uh, I think that covers it all. Um, I don't have a script, so I'm sort of just talking to the top of my head, which uh, normally ends in tears because I start to ramble. Uh, but yeah, again, thanks for the comments last time. It was good. Um, I know there was a couple of people who were not happy with, with what I want to do, but you know, I, I can't please everybody. Um, and at the end of the day, this should be quite fun because uh, I haven't played around with uh, computer-aided tuning, I think it's called, from, from Yezu. Um, so that should be quite fun, being able to have sitting on here some code that's talking with the, uh, the software to, to configure this for frequencies, uh, to, to key up the radio uh, and the like. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure about is the uh, is the bi-directional side of the house and how easy it will be for that sort of VFO type mode to uh, to scan through the band looking for those um, for those digital uh, transmissions. 
Okie doke, I'm going to knock it on the head there and I will start to break this down into phases um, and I will see you at the next video. Cheers all and uh, once again, hey thanks very much for all the input, it was uh, much appreciated.